how a stupid little worm can revolutionize how you think about your own trading and investing. And in today's video, I want to detail how it's completely changed my approach. What's going on, guys? Welcome on in. So today we are going to be talking about the inchworm approach. And this kind of comes off of the back of Jared Tendler, his book right here, The Mental Game of Trading. And we detailed this approach a little bit deeper on the TC Trading Channel, if you guys want to learn exactly what this is in a little bit more depth. But in this video, what I want to do, and I want to dive into my own examples. So maybe this is something that could resonate more with you, something that you can see to help you in your own trading and investing. And I just wanted to share my experience. So the intro approach is something that looks like this. It's like a bell curve. And so what Jared Tendler talks about is that you have kind of three operating systems when it comes to your trading. You have your C game, your B game, and your A game. A game obviously is you're doing good, right? Stuff's working, you know, you're, you're following your plans, like things are that are leading to profitable trades, consistency, right? You want to spend more time up there. But in reality, not every trade, not every day is going to be your A game. You're not always going to be at your best, right? There's going to be things mentally and physically that you do or that cause you to stay on that B game or even C game. And ideally, the whole concept here is as an inchworm moves, right? What it does is it kind of anchors its front feet, right? In the front, it stretches its body out. Then it moves its back up. It has that bell curve kind of look, that shape like this, and then it extends the front again. And so the whole concept there is that you want to be continuously moving your bell curve, right, to the right. And so that means getting rid of more of your C game mistakes and spending more time over on the B and A game side of things, that is what the inchworm concept is all about. Essentially, at the end of the day, it's sucking less. Try to suck less, and in doing that, it's going to lead to more green in your portfolio at the end of the week, month, year, and so forth. So what do we need to do, right? We have this general concept, but we need to map our C game, our B game, and our A game. And we can do it a couple different ways, but there's two sides. There's the mental side and then there's the actual technical side. So the technical side is like, okay, what am I doing intraday execution wise orders, this and that the mental side is kind of the framework, right? Am I operating in a distracted state? Am I in the zone? As they say, how am I feeling right? that? What is leading to make those technical and tactical decisions? Let's start there. So I've gone through this and you always want to continue to be adapting this. And over time, there's going to be a cap to, you know, there's only so many different things you're going to do right or do wrong. So at the end of the day, you know, this is not going to be something that needs to always be, you know, a, a massive laundry list or a grocery list that goes on and on and on. At the end of the day, here's what I have determined to be my C, B and A game when it comes to the mental side of things. In terms of my C game, what I've noticed in taking notes is I'm distracted. I am not someone who is focused and I'm distracted. I'm looking over here. I have something playing over here. I'm watching a video. There's someone talking to me over here. There's something else going on. That's not allowing me to focus in into what's happening in front of me. Maybe you're anxious, how to fight friends and family. You're just thinking about other things. You're negatively talking about your interest and you wake up and you're just feeling shitty. You're just feeling shitty. And you're like, oh, this sucks. I can't do this. I can't do that. You're in a negative framework. Now it doesn't happen all the time, but it's something that is, part of the game. It's part of life. It's part of everything. And recognizing these things is step one, because once you recognize these things, it can help you suck less. If I'm waking up and I feel like that, I had a horrible fight with someone or this or that, and I'm just feeling shit, then I know that. And I might step away. I might not touch a single chart. I might not look at a single chart today because I just know that I'm going to be operating number one, in my C game, I'm in the C game. I am in the C game. And until I get myself out of the C game, I need to step away because the C game leads to losses. And do I need to be taking losses? No. And sometimes having no trades, having a zero PL for the day is actually a win. We can get into patience, fighting the trend, and even overconfidence, right? I come in, had a great day, and I feel like I am on top of the world. And I'm like, I know everything I got. I figured it out. I know what's going to happen next. And that is not a recipe because at the end of the day, you just simply don't know what's going to happen next. And if you're operating under that mindset, you might be right six, seven, eight times out of 10. 
but that ninth and 10th time could be the massive blow up loss that blows the six, seven, eight prior wins. So it doesn't matter. We get to the B game. Maybe I'm you know, slightly, you know, focused in, but I'm not fully dialed in. I'm watching a video over here. You know, I've been watching the charts or my tech's going off and something that's nothing too, too distracting, but it's something that's just a little bit off and I'm not completely focused at that time. Could be overthinking, could be a slight hesitation, maybe going against my gut, might work out sometimes, might not, and then even a slow reaction. So you see something that you like or you don't like, and you just don't act fast enough because you hesitated for a second. And this leads to some winners, some losers. Maybe you're green if you're more experienced, maybe you're break even, and if you're less experienced, maybe you're still a little bit red, but it's not like you're blowing up, it's not having the worst days. There's still some positives to take away when it comes to your trading. Then you get to the A game. You're relaxed, you're in control, patient, trusting the plan, not fighting the trend and just laser focused. I mean, that's at least for me, what I feel is when I'm at my best, these are the different things that are leading to that success from kind of a mental perspective before we even get into anything technical. But speaking of the technicals, let's talk about the tactical skill. So here, what, I'm, what you're realizing is that you guys can see, if I zoom back in, you know, we have a lot in the C game. And that's good. That's not a bad thing because what that allows you to do is to eliminate and work on these things actively so that you can move that bell curve forward. Like that's the whole point is sucking less, have less in the C game and then make less of these mistakes. And then you'll be more, you'll spend more time on that B and A game, which means that you'll be green more often, right? That's what it essentially means. Once you take a step back and start you know, actually tracking some of these things. So what's some C game from a tactical perspective? Chasing price. And when I say chasing price, it could be deeply chasing price. You could chase some prices a little bit here and there, but deep chasing price, like saying, hey, this risk reward is now way out of my favor, but I still think that it could go this much more. I still want to get in now. And then you're going to be underwater within seconds if it reverses. And that's something that from a technical perspective is stupid and I cannot afford to do not respecting stops, something that happens to everybody. If you don't have a hard stop on there or you move that stop last second, like that is one of those things that I recognize as leading to bigger losses than I need. Impulse, this is probably the biggest one, impulse trading. Impulse trading is probably the biggest, biggest issue that I have and that it also comes from training at the gym, holding, you know, randomly buying stuff, not having any, I you know, not having a thought process in place before I take the trade, Seeing that I, hey, I know this is going to happen, or it stems from an I know, or I think I know what's going to happen next. That's what it stems from. And it stems from seeing charts for so long. And as you kind of watch things, you're like, oh, that pattern, that's a this pattern. Without taking a step to recognize where the stop would be, where the profit would be, how much range do you have, is the risk reward making sense, you just enter the trade. Sometimes it'll work for me, but more often than not, I will recognize that that, or I recognize that that is what leads to the majority of my losses, plain and simple. That is my number one thing that I absolutely need to work on and eliminate from my game. When it comes to B game, there could be things like cutting early, scalping, you know, you could be good with scalps. I'm not a big fan of scalps. I've found that scalps, I didn't want to put it in the C game because I can make money sometimes. And I generally speaking, you know, don't lose a ton of money on scalps, right? I do cut them off pretty quick. That's just me. But I found that it's not a consistent, it's not something that I want to be doing on a consistent basis. It's definitely a B game. It's not a game at all by any means. Also things like entering before the full plan, like you could do that and back your way into making that plan after you enter that kind of stems off the impulse trade, but maybe I did that and it wasn't a scalp type of trade. You know, we were looking at a bigger picture chart, 15 minute chart, 20 minute chart, you know, 30 minute chart, whatever hour charts, whatever. So I'm not really at risk of hitting my stop loss. Like in two seconds. Whereas if you're looking at the one minute chart, like, yes, you could be. And so you can't really, well, you could impulse trade, but you got to be quick to recognize stops. So it's one of those things where I'll enter the trade, then back my way in to take profit and stops and then recognize, oh, I could have got a better entry and I end up making or missing out on some gains because I had a bad entry or having a little bigger of a loss than I ultimately needed to because I wasn't patient on at or entering that trade when I needed to. Then when it comes to A game, clear understanding of market direction and movers. Like I have a good feel. Okay, we're going up. We're going down today. It's a choppy day. It's a trend day. Like getting a good feel for that, that leads to being pretty successful in terms of the A game. 
clearly having levels. Like I can see clear support resistance. I have charted it out. I have it under control and I see it. Letting price come to my spots and then entering on my spots, kind of one of those things that kind of the impulse trade and the entering before the full plan were just keeping me shy of, of that full potential, right? But A game, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm actually executing properly, okay? On top of that, seeing things like who's stuck and respecting my plan levels. What I mean by that is obviously taking profits when I say I'm gonna take profits and cutting losses when I say I'm gonna cut losses. But seeing who's stuck is a bit of a unique thing, but understanding, oh, shorts right now are in trouble. Oh, longs, the dip buyers, they're in trouble. And that could back your way into building out a better plan. And so that could come off of big events, big time moves, big time reactions from, let's say, the crowd perspective, put call ratios, things like that can give you a better feel for maybe what's actually happening and who is stuck, where the majority is, and playing the opposite side of that where there would be the most pain for those who are stuck in trades. So at the end of the day, it comes down to trying to suck less and getting rid of all the C game, not all of them, but getting rid of as much as possible and working on that. You're not gonna get rid of them, they're gonna come back. But if you can actively be in control and recognize when they're happening, it's going to help contribute to sucking less, less losers, less large losers, and ultimately spending more time in that A and B game, which you know, is going to be a much more profitable strategy and system in the long run. Hope that was helpful. I guess I'll leave a link to this book uh, on Amazon if you want to check it out in the description box down below, The Mental Game of Trading from Jared Tendler. It's kind of like the next leg up, I would say, to trading in the zone from Mark Douglas. Uh, there's some more, I guess, actionable tips and advice uh, and things that you could follow along with here versus Mark Douglas is a lot more mental. It's a lot more just trading psychology. This is big on trading psychology. They both are trading psychology books, but this one, I think that you can do a lot more. It's a lot more engaging and you can be a lot more active in following along and doing the same things and mapping things out and doing the examples and doing the exercises that he's talking about yourself. If you like these sets of videos, let me know in the comment section down below. Like always, be happy to do more of them in the future. Hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing because we'll be making more videos like this going forward. Thanks so much. Any other links and resources will be linked down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.